Alright guys, so someone sent me this question and um, I'm gonna see if I can um, run down the methods of solving something like this. So um, in this question, uh, you have a blood pressure tracing. So the blood pressure tracing is this one is going to be the systolic, this is going to be the diastolic, increases, systolic, diastolic, same thing going along for the other ones, for example this one, this one over here is the diastolic, and so on. The other thing that you have to notice about this is that the, the frequency of how these things move, like for example, it's very wide over here, and it's very, very narrow over here, this actually represents the heart's rate. And um, if you looked at my previous few videos, you would be able to um, break this down in terms of blood pressure first. My, my usual instinct in these questions is to look at blood pressure, not heart rate. So, as we talked before um, in the previous videos, I have a systolic and a diastolic, and I talked about how um, there are several types of receptors that can increase blood pressure. Um, beta 1 is only systolic, and then beta 2 would decrease systolic blood pressure and diastolic, and then once again, muscarinic would look like this. So in the case of um, these questions, let's take a look. So the first thing we see in the control is that the blood pressure increases. Now, with just increase, we can deduce what it could, it could possibly be. So let's take a look at this list over here. And then when we look at this list, we notice that this one will increase blood pressure, and this one will increase blood pressure. But unfortunately, all these are mixtures of blood pressures, so we have to um, we can, we have to try each one individually. All right, so we know that blood pressure is going up. We know um, what can increase your blood pressure. Now let's. Let's talk about these drugs because they're pre-treating your drug, your um, your. They're they're pre-treating these these um these tracings over here, and then after you put your drug in, the effect changes. So let's talk about phenoxybenzamine. Phenoxybenzamine is an alpha. It's an alpha blocker. It's not specific. Alpha one, alpha two. They will block both. Mecamylamine is going to be a ganglion blocker. So remember what ganglion blockers do. First thing is that they kill predominant tone. And the other thing that they do is that they, they stop reflexes. And then finally, we have propranolol, which is going to be a beta blocker. Beta 1, beta 2, both. And you can figure that out from the alal. All right. So the first thing we look at is the control. And then let's compare the control with phenoxybenzamine. So let's take a look. So we know that there is an increase of blood pressure. It could be an alpha 1 or an alpha or beta beta 1. And we notice right away that when we put an alpha blocker on it, when we give an alpha blocker, all of a sudden, this whole entire thing shifts down. So, obviously, we have to know that there is some alpha effect going on. But what's this other thing over here? So, what is that? So, let's take a look. Norepinephrine has alpha 1 beta 1, beta 2. Norepinephrine has alpha 1 and beta 1. Phenylephrine is an alpha 1 by itself. Isoproteranol is going to be um, beta 1 and beta 2. These are all agonists. And terbutylene is a beta 2. All right, so we know that it can't be isoproteranol, it can't be terbutylene because um, phenoxybenzamine is alpha-1 blocker. 
So it has to be within A, B, and C. However, if it were just an alpha 1, don't you think that this one would go back to normal? It wouldn't look like this. So it cannot be phenylephrine because something else happened. So now we're down to two things. We're looking at epinephrine and norepinephrine. So let's try to look at um, the other information to see whether we can get anything else out of it. The first thing I look at is methylmylamine. So methylmylamine is, um, is a ganglion blocker. So what it will do, it will stop your reflexes. But here's the thing. If you have an increase of blood pressure, your normal reaction is to decrease your heart rate. But your heart rate is increasing here. Do you notice that these things are really, really minor? What could be causing an increase in heart rate? Well, beta 1 both increase heart rate. So now, you confirm that it has some sort of alpha 1. You confirm that it has some sort of alpha, beta, beta 1. And let's take a look at propranolol. So propranolol is a beta blocker. So when you eliminate both betas, beta 1, beta 2, if you eliminate them, let me just make it a different color. If you get rid of beta 1, beta 2, like that, it's not specific, then you only have alpha 1. Look, if you only have alpha 1, then only your, um, your systolic and diastolic will go up an equal amount. All right. So the answer is between norepinephrine and epinephrine. So let's take a look at this part over here. So if you blocked your alphas, you're left with beta 1, beta 2, beta 1 over here, or beta 1 and beta 2. If you still had your beta 2, don't you th expect your diastolic would decrease? Your diastolic did not decrease. So in this case, with only beta 1, remember beta 1 will only increase your systolic, it would mean that phenoxybenzamine tells you that this thing is actually norepinephrine.